You've worked at WWE, TNA, AEW, New Japan, MLW. Where's the strangest place you've ever wrestled? It might have been 2016. I remember wrestling outside in Mexico. I enjoy you promoting Bobby Lashley's butt. Interesting con period, me and Bobby's run. Why did the Bobby Lashley pairing disintegrate? From the very beginning, it was an experiment. And I think that experiment just fizzled out over time. What championship run make you feel the best? I know which I haven't won. I gotta be world champ, man. What's going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall, and welcome to 10 Count right here on Wrestling News Co. On today's edition, I'm talking to a man who I swear has worked everywhere. It's Leo Rush. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, man. Uh, I'm super excited that we that we can do this interview, and I really appreciate you having me on. But, uh, yeah, thank you. Of course. Now, if you don't even remember, a year ago, maybe even a year and a half ago, you had an album coming out, and we set up a, a Zoom call, and about... Two minutes into it, Zoom did what it always does. It turned heel on us, and it screwed up the interview, and so we couldn't get that. But here we are today talking about it. And as I said off the top, you've worked at WWE, TNA, AEW, New Japan, MLW. Keep adding letters, you've probably worked there. But where is the strangest place you've ever wrestled? So I want to backtrack a little bit because I wanted to bring up this past Zoom interview that we were supposed to do. Yes. Go. Uh, funny thing, at the time, I was living in LA. It was a huge heat wave going on. You're not the only one. There was a huge heat wave going on. And I was doing these interviews out of my garage. I set up this big set and I was doing the interviews out of my garage. And the, uh, the heat was so bad that it just kept overheating everything in my garage. So I think the Zoom call ended up dropping. But uh, yeah, that's what it was. But you want to <laughs> like bring that up uh, because yeah, I was just talking about that to somebody. Like, what a crazy time period that was um, in general. But uh, yeah, I'm glad that we that we can do this. Um, as far as the wrestling organization, you said the, the strangest. The I look like a, like a location, the strangest place. Because I've talked to so many people. They're like, I was changing in a, a barn in Canada in December. I was in Japan in a river wrestling in front of a Walmart. Like, where's the strangest place, location that you've ever wrestled? It might have been 2016. I remember wrestling in Mexico. Uh, and I remember wrestling outside. And I also remember having on gear that I just bought and it got completely ruined. There wasn't any pads on the outside <laughs> or anything. So every time I got thrown to the outside, it just get covered in dust and mud and whatever else was on the ground. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was definitely in, uh, in, in Mexico. I remember wrestling outside. Um, yeah, that probably might have been the, the the craziest or strangest place that I've that I've that I've wrestled. I, I good because I've heard some uh, unfortunate locations. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts said he wrestled in in a, a cockfighting ring, and they were giving out shotguns during the intermission. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know your gear getting ruined. Now you know I don't think anyone really ever asked that question. Is like how do you clean? wrestling gear if it's covered in blood or dust do you just throw it away and go eh hey, we'll get new ones or is there a process you can't just throw it in with your whites no well they say you're supposed to not put your, your wrestling gear in the washing machine anyways oh uh, because the material the, the the fabric that's being used and you don't want to like ruin it and uh is a way to wash the gear so that it can be preserved so that you can t continuously wear it on TV and stuff like that. So you're supposed to hand wash your gear. <laughs> you're supposed to let it air dry. So if, if, if anybody, if you ever see anybody that has some sparkles that are kind of like not so sparkly anymore, it's probably because they're putting it in the, uh, <laughs> but, uh, They're like, I ain't, ain't watching this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, man. Cause I, you know, I got three kids. And I have a wife. So everyone has to do, you got to do your laundry the right way. The towel's got to go in here, the sweatshirts, the pants. It's, it's a hassle. You understand the world. I tell my wife all the time, I used to know how to do laundry until I met you. <laughs> I used to know how to do it. Now I'm separating things. I don't know what uh, goes here anymore. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, did I fold it right? Is it, how do I fit it in this bag to make it this small? How'd you even make the towel this big? I, 
it's a talent. It's a talent some skills have, but I, I don't have those skills. But, you know, obviously you have skills in the ring. And again, like I mentioned, you've been everywhere. And really my first, one of my first introductions to you was NXT. And there's a picture, if you Google your name, it's you and William Regal. William Regal, what did he mean to your wrestling career as a mentor? Because so many people always credit William Regal of being such a great mind for the wrestling business, but someone that also helped them find their way. Uh, I think Regal, at least for me, um, he always served as someone who, not as a, a stamp of approval, but because of his tenure in professional wrestling and how much he's done and um, how well-respected he is and his craft is, um, I've always looked at Regal as somebody who kind of does give that stamp of approval. It's really cool that I had that moment with him in NXT, with him coming out, me winning the Cruiserweight title and him kind of presenting the title to me and putting that title around my waist. It was so, uh, it was pretty surreal. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been fortunate enough to encounter Regal in different parts of my career, not just WWE. Um, and have that relationship with him. Uh, but Regal has always been somebody who I have looked up to um, and someone who I have respected in the world of professional wrestling. Um, and I don't take his words lightly. I don't take his approval lightly. Um, and I don't take his uh, view of me uh, lightly as well. So that's what Regal has always represented uh, to me. Yeah, William Regal I, it always reminds me of someone who it's like, uh, I, I've seen him so many different places when you do interviews backstage or performance centers, whatever, and I see him, I'm always like intimidated. It feels like when I think of wrestlers, <laughs> yeah. you think of like, I don't like him, I like Bully Ray too. Like these people I'm just like afraid to go up to, but then I see like Undertaker, I'm like, what's up, buddy? But like William Regal, I'm like, please God, please God, don't, don't. Yeah come near me you you scare me a little bit but it's good to hear that he's always such a positive role model for so many people but you know there is something that i love about your career and there is something that maybe you don't like about it but let's talk about it bobby lashley's butt uh i enjoyed you promoting bobby lashley's butt i thought it was hilarious i thought it was nice but what did you think of this and how was this pitched to you to pretty much promote Bobby Lashley and his butt? Uh, definitely a interesting time period in me and Bobby's run. Um, but, uh, no, I enjoyed it. It was pretty, it was, it, I mean, it was entertaining. It was, it was super entertaining. Um, it got people talking, uh, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't speak on the other side of the, the, the pairing, um, because I don't know what that was like for, for, for Bobby. Uh, I know that what that was like for me, I know that it put me in a position to, to, uh, represent him and speak and, and, uh, just be entertaining. I mean, it was so, it was such like a silly thing, um, that everybody seemed to, have enjoyed um yeah it, it 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 was cool i i there's not much to say about it other than it was you know i'm in and it was enjoyable uh for 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 a lot of people um yeah it, it was fun <laughs> uh but like how is this even pitched you because obviously as a professional wrestler suddenly like hey we, we want you to be a manager but we also want you to talk about Bobby Lashley. Like, oh, okay, I can do that. But really focus on his ass. Like, he because he's bending over, he's slapping his cheeks. <laughs> How is this pitched to you? Like, it was pitched to me in a bodybuilder type of way, which I knew absolutely nothing about. Uh, yeah, at the time, I wasn't like a super heavy gym rat type of person. I didn't go in and... Uh, I want to build this part of my muscles. I want to build this part of my muscles. I didn't know the the terminology or the names or anything. Uh, so the biggest thing that was the focus for me, which was pitch that I need to learn how to pronounce these very specific muscles on the body. Uh, and I needed to do it within hours. 
Uh, so that was pretty, that was pretty nerve wracking. Uh, I was like, oh man, I need to learn these words before I get on national television in less than two hours and I need to be able to say them correctly. Uh, so it was, it was a challenge, man. I, I, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was scary. It was, it was, it was definitely scary for me. Um, because I feel like I was th kind of thrown to the wolves. Um, and I feel like it was a, almost like a test or two, um, to see if I can last or if I can hang or if I can, you know, uh, go with the program or whatever the case was. Um, but I feel like I knocked it out the park, man. I feel like I, uh, I did the job. I did the, uh, I made people believe what I was doing, what I was saying. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good time. I'll be honest, like at the time, I don't think it was accepted as much as I think as people remember it today. Like today, people are like, oh, remember that? Oh, that was great. But at the time, people were like, what's going on here? What do we, what? Like Bobby Lashley just left TNA a little while before that. He came in and then they had all these random moments. I interviewed Bobby Lashley a few months ago and he really, in one sentence, described the frustration he was having with Bobby Lashley's sisters, with Sami Zayn. And then, uh, this butt thing, like there's things where he was like, what are we doing? Like I, I came here and now we're doing this. And obviously the frustration is him versus yours where you brought up a test. I've heard stories for years about wrestling organizations, testing people on seeing what will push their buttons and will they, I don't know, just react to it. So do you feel like you're really being tested on like, let's see if Leo can get this thing over. And if he can get Bobby Lashley's butt over, well, shit. Then he can, we will give him more opportunities. I mean, of course, it, it has to be a, a test in, in some way. I mean, I, especially because I feel like so many different things was happening with Bobby around that time. And I feel like me getting paired up with Bobby was another, another like, okay, let's see if this works. Um, you know, I, I feel like I was uh, getting different tasks throughout the months to see like, okay, let's see what he can do with this. Let's see what he can do with this. Let's see how long this can go on and how, you know, what can be built off of what's being uh, promoted or showcased in, yeah. in, in section of, uh, of, of the run. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I think it was, it was a test. I think everything is a test to, to really to see, you know, what it'll do, how long it'll last and um, if it'll catch steam. And I definitely feel like me and Bobby being paired together was one of the biggest tests of them all just in general, because nobody, nobody knew. Uh, I didn't know. I certainly didn't know. It felt like Bobby didn't know <laughs> uh, when we got paired together. So uh, I think everything that we were doing was, was really a test um, and uh, an experiment in some way to see if this would, if this will work. And I feel like it did. Um, I feel like it did for, for, for many reasons. I feel like it did because it was so unexpected. And, and nobody, nobody thought about this pairing um, and thought that this pairing would, would be as uh, successful a, as it was. And um, yeah, uh, I think it was a test for sure. But I, I, I'll pass. I think I'll pass. <laughs> I think so too. And so, so when you get the call, hey, we want you to come manage Bobby Lashley, is it more like Bobby's just sitting in a room, they open the door, hey, Bobby, here's Leo. Hey, Bobby, this is Leo, and he's going to be your manager. Bye. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> really, I mean, that was my first time meeting Bobby. First time I met Bobby was the first time I met Bobby. And the first time I met Bobby was when everybody on TV saw that I met Bobby. So I thought that was pretty unique and pretty special. And um, I think that's why people gravitated towards it so much because it was so organic and we brought people on that ride with us. You know, the relationship and the chemistry that was being created on weekly television with me and Bobby was actual real chemistry that was being created between me and Bobby. And I feel like people saw us become, you know, wrestler manager relationship, friend type relationship. Uh, uncle nephew type relationship. It was so relatable to so many people, um, and uh, yeah, I think I think it was it was a pretty special time period, an interesting time period, a unique time period, but a special time period for for sure. Yeah, the word interesting has been brought up many times. Uh, <laughs> 
so when the pairing, because it felt like to me the pairing had a stop, go, stop, go situation where it was like someone's really into this and then one day someone wasn't into this and next week someone's back into this and then someone wasn't into this. Where did that kind of rocky ship start and end and then why did the Bobby Lashley pairing just dis dis disintegrate? I really don't know when it started, really. I, can, I honestly can't even remember. The only thing that I specifically remember, and that's because it was so, like, out there. Uh, but I remember it was me and Bobby versus Finn at Elimination Shank, the IC title. Um, and I believe Bobby turned on me. He, like, picked me up, slammed me in the middle of the ring. Uh, and I thought that that was it. I thought it was done. Um, I thought that I had failed Bobby Lashley, the Almighty, <laughs> and uh, that was gonna be that was gonna be it. But the following night, you know, me and Bobby are paired back up, and now we're wrestling uh, debut on Ricochet and Finn Balor. Um, so there was a little confusion right there, and that was the only time where I, it felt like, huh, you know. What's going on here? Are we splitting? Are we together? You know, and I feel like I feel like you know maybe uh, the writers or whoever was in charge um, at the time was kind of contemplating on whether they wanted me and Bobby to stay together. And I think that's when things started to kind of drift, and you started to see the separation after after um, WrestleMania, and uh, yeah, then we just weren't together anymore. So I think it was. Like I said, I think from the very beginning, it was an experiment. Um, and I think that experiment just started to fizzle out over time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. Honestly, and honest to God, I feel like today, if that storyline happened with you and Bobby, there would be like this. I don't know what's happened with like Twitter or maybe social media in general. The audience has like changed a little bit, maybe evolved where they appreciate someone getting something like, hey, we want you to get Bobby Lassie's butt cheeks over. Like, we need you to promote his butt. In today's world, people would be like, well, Leo, we love Leo, and he has this butt thing he has to do, so we are going to support him no matter what because we like Leo. Versus before, it wasn't like that. It felt like it felt like we don't like this story, so that means we don't like Leo. And I feel like it swapped somehow. I don't know when it's changed. At least... I've noticed it with when I talk to people, even wrestlers, when they're given something they don't like, well, we're like, well, yeah, but we like you. So, you know, you might have something you don't like, but we appreciate what you're trying to do because we understand you didn't come up with this, but I liked it. I liked the butt thing. But anyways. Um, people, respect, people respect when somebody is putting their all into what is being given to them. Right. And I feel like that was very noticeable. I mean, yeah, it was ridiculous. Let's put it out there. It was ridiculous. But people saw that the both of us committed to it. Yes. Uh, and I think that that was well respected. I mean, looking back at it now, I think people respect it a lot more. Like, man, like, I missed that, you know, because it was super entertaining and they could see how into it we were to try to make it entertaining for them. And I think over time, you know, with how Bobby's career has gone, how my career has gone since then, we've just... Um, continuously been um, followed and respected by all of these people who who have followed our journey uh, since then, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. The, the, the audience has definitely changed. I think it'll continue to change uh, because the industry is changing. The business is, is, is changing slowly but surely. And um, all of those changes are being done in a public eye. Uh, so I feel like a lot of the fans are are kind of following this and they're they're appreciating certain things and they're gravitating towards certain things that kind of have nothing to do with the business itself, but more so the people being invested in the wrestlers, being mm -hmm. invested in what their actual skill and talent is and where they shine the most. And people want to see where these people shine the most. Um, so, yeah, it's it's cool. Um I'm, I, uh, man, every time this, this gets brought up, I always have like a different perspective or a different outlook on it because of the time, the timing in which we did that very specific, uh, role 
um, where we were birth both at in our careers, uh, the perspective that it showed us. You know, I was just talking about the other day, like how that me being in the manager role just gave me such a different perspective within WWE that I feel like a lot of people don't even think about. I was talking about how, you know, you have an entirely different outlook when you are a wrestler, when you are put in the center and you are looking out in front of all of these people. It's an entirely different perspective being on the left or right side of that centerpiece and kind of seeing all of these people look at the centerpiece and not look at you. So you get to see the audience in a different light and you get to experience the moment in a different way. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 man, what a ridiculous time that was. But I enjoyed it, man. It was, it was fun. It was cool. It was different. Um, it, it brought me out of my shell a little bit. Um, yeah, and all of these are qualities that make wrestlers great. You have to go through some of these things that a lot of wrestlers probably don't go through. Uh, but I'm glad that I went through them, especially that early on in my career. I mean, I was 23. I'm 29 right now. So all of that experience that I had back then, I'm glad that I went through it then. And now I have that to look back on and can take that experience and branch off and do greater things. And yeah. Oh, man. Again. You know, uh, you again, the, the storyline. And then, of course, as time would go on, you know, Bobby Lash would go on and become, you know, a heavyweight champion, the Hurt Business and now the Street Profits, things like that. So, like, same thing with Bobby. I feel like they're always like, let's just screw with Bobby for a little bit and see how he feels about this and then try this and then try that. But either way, though, wrestling, it's not ballet. So what is your worst injury? My worst injury, man. I mean, I definitely have to say my uh, my shoulder. Um uh, I tore my bicep and my labrum uh, back in 2022, I believe. Um, yeah, that was pretty rough. I was on a shelf for about nine months, nine, ten months. Um, yeah, that, I would probably say that that was my, my, my worst injury that I've had in wrestling. My God. And, you know, while looking up more information about professional wrestlers and talking to wrestlers, hazing always feels like, he used to be part of the club. Like, oh, if he can't handle hazing, then he doesn't belong here, which I think is the strangest thing to ever go to work and expect to be hazed to, like, get your stripes. And there are stories about how you were hazed, and a lot of wrestlers have been hazed, and Miz has spoke openly about this, where even Heath Slater interviewed recently, he was, like, forced to dress in broom closets. How do you feel about hazing in professional wrestling? And it wasn't necessary to, like, break you in and be one of the boys. Um, I think it's dead. I think it's a uh, dead. Um, yeah, I mean, we're all professionals. We're all adults. Um, I think it's something that shouldn't be tolerated uh, or something that should be put up with. Um, yeah, and that's all I have to that's all I really have to to say about that, you know, you know, yeah. going in there to work. Um, yeah, you never know what's going on in somebody's personal life. You never know what's going on behind the scenes and you don't want to go to work and, uh, add to that. Um, so yeah, this, you, you just never know, you know, um, we should all be respectable. We should all, uh, want to be respected. It's, I mean, it's simple. It's treat treat people how you want to be treated. And that's right. simple as that. Yeah, I agree. Because I can't imagine people going to work and be like, oh, cool, I'm going to do a good job. No, you're not. Carry this or do that or go change in the broom closet because we don't think you're part of the boys. Like, hello, I, I work here. Like, I'm not, I don't, like, who do you think I am? Like, I, I work here. But the idea that one of your employees can, one of your peers can be like, well, I've been here for 10 years, so I can tell you what to do. Like, you're not my boss. <laughs> but it's just craziness and and also more craziness right now you know you are a former exhibition champion in tna and recently as in like yesterday or the day before scott demore who brought back the brain tna no longer in power and a lot of wrestlers are saying that he was such a huge 
a proponent for their careers and such a, a, a great guy. And what was your experience with Scott Tamore? We don't talk about him leaving the company more than I would like to know. What did Scott do for you and how was he a friend or a foe or just a colleague to you? I mean, Scott believed in me. Scott believed in me. I, I put out a tweet the other the other day um, just saying thanks for believing in me. Um, you know, especially at a time where I, I, I needed somebody to to believe in me. And Scott was there. Scott was the one who, who believed in me. Scott was the one who said, I see something special in this guy. I want to put this guy in a position to succeed. Um, he trusted me. He uh, and he put me in that role, in that light that you know I saw myself in for for many years, and that's that's a champion. Uh, and I don't take that lightly. Um, yeah, forever grateful for that. Forever grateful for being uh, a part of Impact and you know now TNA. Um, you know I'm sure a lot of people's relationship with Scott. Uh, is a lot goes a lot deeper than what our relationship was. I mean, I was only there for, you know, six, maybe less than six months. But the time that I was there, you know, Scott was always open um, with me, with how he saw me as a wrestler, as a person. Uh, yeah, and that, that, that was super refreshing. Um, it was super refreshing as, as a boss uh, to, to have that kind of, uh, communication, that open level of communication, um, where we're being honest about how we feel, uh, which is rare, you know, <laughs> feelings aren't normally involved too much in the, in the business, uh, realm. Um, but it was cool that I had that relationship with Scott it was cool that he believed in me so much that he trusted me, um, to hold that title. Um, and to be a strong champion representing the not only the division but the the company as a whole. So, yeah. No, I don't know. It's it's a sad day for wrestlers and Scott Tamore, but we'll see what happens next. But as of right now, I interviewed Moose about it. Not happy. So we'll have to see how it all goes down. But I, you know, he, he's some someone who I've noticed has been like the face of TNA for so long, and so hopefully whatever's next is better but uh you know i'm glad that he gave you and listened to you and your thoughts because you've worked with so many different companies and you won so many championships but like is there a championship run or a win that sticks out to you being like oh god like i believe i'm a champion and finally i am a champion like what championship run or championship did that like really make you feel the best i know what championship sticks out to me that i haven't won that makes me feel a certain kind of way. Oh, I got to be world champ, man. I feel like I'm. Uh, I feel like I'm one of those ones. Um, you know, when that happens, who knows? But that's something that that always eats at me in the back of my back of my head. Like, oh man, Leo Rush, world champ. Uh, where that is, who knows? But um, yeah. That's that that's one that that sticks out to me more than a championship that has already been won. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the titles that I've won. Uh, incredible moments in my career, uh, absolutely incredible moments in my career. Um, but I'm always wanting more. I'm always striving for more. Uh, I'm always wanting to outdo myself. I mean, I'm in competition with myself uh, constantly. Um, so I feel like I always want to achieve more. Um, and I feel like I can. Uh, yeah, I've done a lot in the world of professional wrestling in my career. And I feel like I have more to offer. So maybe one day uh, we're, we're still climbing up that ladder. Of course. I know I'm like this, but are you like, are you someone who has a goal you achieve that goal, and the minute you achieve it, you're like, "All right, what's next?" Is that yeah. something you have in your brain? For sure, for sure. I mean, I got and and I'm I'm definitely getting better at taking those moments to breathe, realize what it is that I that that I've done, uh, be proud of myself that I set a goal and I accomplished it. Um, yeah, just kind of live in that moment, uh, being present in that moment. Um, that's that's where I'm at. Uh, you know. Just being present in the moment, um, celebrating those wins, no matter how big or little those wins are. Just celebrating the wins because those wins are, they're they're 
the great, you know, they're, they're, they, they mean something, you know, even I'm, I'm, I can, I can only imagine you being a, uh, a person that interviews a lot of people, you know, you're looking at somebody who you want to interview and it's like, okay, I got that interview, but you already next, you're, you're moving on to the other yeah. interview. So you're not celebrating like, man, like I dreamt about interviewing this person and I interviewed that person. Let me go out. Let me celebrate. Let me, you know what I mean? You're not even thinking. Oh, no, no. I, I hear you, fam. I hear you. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, it's, it's similar. It's similar with me. Um, I go, I accomplish it. And then I'm like, all right, that's checked off. What's next? But um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm getting better at celebrating those wins for sure. Same, same. I, I'm, tr I'm trying. I, it's hard, but you I agree. Like you, you want, you try to breathe like, oh, that was great. Wasn't it? And then, then someone through the back of your mind's like, yeah, but what's next? And you're like, yeah. ah, no, no, brain, enjoy this moment, breathe it in, drink it in, have a good time. Yeah, I there's been moments, obviously, with you two winning championships, the world title is is chirping back there. Has there ever been discussions in any organizations where you're like, it's gonna happen, and then it just doesn't happen? Oh no, 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 no. I wish, <laughs> I wish that would have been great if if that if those were conversations. Um. Yeah, those aren't conversations that that have ever been had. Uh, but I but I feel like people see it. I feel like people see the potential. I guess um, I and I guess I can live with that. I can live with people seeing the potential, uh, but I can't live with me not capitalizing off of that potential and. Mm -hmm continuing on to you know show that that is not just potential it, it, it is something that uh can actually happen um so yeah i the way that i've been inspired by professional wrestling uh i feel like it's been so strong um and it's bigger than wrestling it's like it's it, it, it's like uh life just 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 accomplishing things in life um you know uh, i don't think that i can i don't think that i can move forward with being content with the things that i've that i've done or move on with being content with how people view me as a performer um because like I said, I'm always in competition with myself. And if I see myself in a certain way or a certain light, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, to get to that level that I see myself at. Um, so I definitely see myself as a, as a world champion in, in professional wrestling um, or national TV. Uh, I think I'm more than capable. I think a lot of people are more than capable, um, but it takes that special someone to actually go after that and and, and and really show that it's possible. So um, if, if your legal rush is going to be the one to do that, then God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, you said you were 29 years old, but you've already retired from professional wrestling and then came back. Why did you retire? And then why did you come back? Um, I used to say a lot that it, the same reason I retired is the same reason why I came back. And that was because of my family. Um, I'm a huge family man. I, I love being around my family. I love being surrounded by my family. Um, I love feeling that love and that energy um, and, and giving that love and giving that energy to, to my family. Uh, and especially at the time, I mean, I feel like a lot of people, uh, obviously they don't forget, but I mean, that time period, I feel like a lot of people were on the edge of, you know, what they wanted to do, what they didn't want to do. Uh, different ventures that they were trying to 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 go on. Um, you know, it was COVID. It was it was it was a scary time, man. Um, it was it was a unpleasant time. Um, it was an unpredictable time. Um, I suffered two injuries during that time. Um, I got laid off of my dream job. Um, I went on a reality TV show. I moved to LA. I, you know, I did so many things during that time. So I think, I think, uh, not that it's excusable, uh, that I kept saying that I was, you know, retiring, coming back, retiring, coming back. 
it is what it is. I'm and I'm I'm here now. Is that's what matters <laughs> the most. Uh it's a love hate relationship with with wrestling that I have. It's 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 I'm so passionate about it. And I'm sure I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you've heard the the quote before, the saying before, like, you know, love is the same as hate and vice versa. Uh yeah, that's how I feel about wrestling, man. I, I feel like and that's how you uh I almost feel like if people don't say they want to retire and they come back then do you really love it you know what i mean like i want to see the, i want to see how much passion you have for it i want to see if you love it so much that you're willing to walk away from it but you're also willing to come back to it if that's what you feel i feel like somebody who walks away from wrestling and just stays away from wrestling forever they never really loved it you know what i mean oh yeah the call the siren the, you know, yeah, calling so you back to the sea yeah, so uh, yeah, people like to to joke around about the the retirements here and there, but I mean, I think it ultimately it's shown my passion. Um, I think ultimately it's shown how much I love the business, how much I uh, love wrestling, how much I've loved wrestling since I was a little kid, um, and how much I want to succeed in, in in wrestling, and 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 how much it's changed my life. You know, you gotta. Wrestling has to have changed your life in some way for you to have even considered retiring from it. You know, wrestling has changed my life, man. Uh in 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 many ways than 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 just one. Um, so yeah, it's always gonna be a difficult thing talking about wrestling and talking about frustrations and talking about um, you know, where you see yourself and how you see yourself and and wanting to walk away when something doesn't go your way or walk away when you know, things don't seem to be what you thought that it was. But I mean, that's the that's the beauty about about wrestling, man. It's always going to draw you back in one way or another because there's that there's that special something about it that, um, yeah, yeah. Now you got me all fired up. you got me all fired up, man. I'm talking about wrestling. I'm talking about the love. I'm talking about the passion. Yeah, I might retire tomorrow. Shit. Oh, no. What are you doing? I was going to say, Terry Funk retired at least like 16 times for professional wrestling. So he came, he obviously was like, I'm done. I'm back. I'm done. I'm back. So, you know, Mick Foley did it. I remember as clear as day, he retired with a lost retirement match. And then a month later, he was in WrestleMania 2000. So, you know, you're not the first to ever retire, then come back and then retire and come back. So no problems there. But please don't retire tomorrow, okay? Right. Please let let. And I'm I'm going to tour right now. I can't retire tomorrow. Yeah, we we can't do that. We can't allow this to happen because we we need you to continue on. But again, you you kind of brought it up. Like wrestling to me, to a lot of people, even myself, when I see someone get an interview that I wanted, I'm like, well, why would they get that, not me? And then I'm like, I read I read a quote from John Cena: "Control what you can control." I can't control what someone else is doing. I like to control what I'm doing, and so. I have to just focus on me and focus on what I'm doing. In wrestling, as you brought up, wrestling's kind of like I, I like a high school girlfriend. I, I, my, it's like, man, I love that girlfriend so much, but that girlfriend also pisses me off so much. I'm leaving. I'm, we're, we're over. And then you're like, no, please, I love you. Come back. It, it's, it's a love hate. You brought up love hate is definitely a, uh, a thing in wrestling. But I hope you don't retire tomorrow. I just let's just <laughs> can we can we promise that? <laughs> yeah, because no so. You know, again, there's been so much going on with you in professional wrestling. I got like two more questions. One involves this run with AEW. Why was it cut so short? Uh, I was cut short because it was it was cut short. I mean, it just didn't work out. Um, you know, I I, 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 I I say this quite often um, every time that it is brought up. Um, yeah, it just didn't work out, and 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 it didn't work out for. For, for multiple reasons, but regardless of what those reasons are, uh, things just don't work out. Um, you know, uh, it's like that in life for, for many things um, and for many people. Um, you know, if it was a different time period, if it was a different situation, if it was, it's like, yeah, all of these what ifs, and but they weren't what ifs. It was what was going on in the, the present time. And in that present time, things just didn't work out. Um, so 
you know, not not to say that you'll never see me there again or not to say that, uh, you know, the relationship is bad or anything like that. I think it was just a period in time that it just didn't work out for both parties and we had to split ways. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I enjoyed my time with, with AEW. Um, I think that's, that's, that's a lot that, um, that gets, uh, lost in all of the noise. It's like, oh, uh, like, well, did, I, I don't even think that question even ever comes up. It's like, oh, did you enjoy it? And it's like, yeah, I did enjoy it. I mean, look what I was doing. Uh, it was, it was cool to be able to, to, to partner with Dante. It was cool to be able to work with, with, with Taz. It was cool to be able to work with, uh, Ricky Starks, uh, um, all of those people that I worked with, uh, super talented people. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely enjoyable. Um, and I think it opened me up into a whole another audience and reintroduced me to an audience that knew who I was, uh, prior in WWE. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed my time. The time that I did have in AEW, I, I enjoyed it. So both parties just agreed to separate. That's what. That's the reason why it ended short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, because I've inter I've interviewed many people who worked in AEW, and they all have a different experience of how backstage was, and of course, every everything. Obviously, you talk to certain people, they'll still tell you, "I was the worst," and other people, "It was the best." So everyone has a different experience working there, but. I just remember at the time there were some controversies happening, at least on Twitter, and maybe that had something to do with it. But at the same time, we all can't get along sometimes, so we, it's easier to step away than to uh, bring up the past. So, yeah, and I, I mean, it's so funny that you that you say things are getting brought up on Twitter, uh, because man, Twitter isn't real. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Twitter is real and, uh, you know, people see what they see and they make their own conclusions based off of what they see. And if they don't have more information than what they see, then that's what they go off of. Uh, so Twitter isn't real. Get over no, it. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we all realize this because um, I've, I like, for instance, I'll do an interview with someone and someone will say something. I see uh, a person who saw my interview and they're like, how dare you? Da -da 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 -da. And I'm like, Oh, you're actually gonna say it to my face? Like, oh, good, good for you. Like, what's your Twitter account? Let me block you really quick. <laughs> but you know, what is next for Leo Rush? Like, what is going to happen next week, the week after that, the year from now? What are your goals for the next coming year? Well, my goal right now, um, I'm on a pretty uh, extensive tour right now. Uh, I'm on the independent circuit. Um, I'm, I'm traveling to different states around the country. I'm going out of the country. Um, I'm finishing up actually in America this month. And then at the tail end of February, I'll be heading off to Europe. I'll be wrestling in England, Ireland, France, Romania, Wales. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. Just being able to, uh, to wrestle in front of all of these fans again, um, so consistently. Uh, and those fans being able to keep up with what I'm doing prior to me hitting their city or their state or their country. I think it's an exciting time um, for me just to be able to gauge the audience, see what they like, what they don't like, um, how they're responding to me, where they want to see me next. You know, I don't have too many expectations for me right now other than to stay healthy uh, just because I have so much going on. Um, my biggest goal is to stay in one piece through it all. Uh, because of my, um, my, uh, my history with, with my, my shoulder injury. Um, yeah, my, my focus is on, is solely on being in shape, um, staying in shape, making sure that I'm resting, making sure that I'm recovering, making sure that I'm checking in with myself and that I'm not, uh, stressing myself out. Um, you know, life is life is short um, and you never know what's going to happen. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? So I just got to I just got to, you know, as you can see, you know, every day on the old on the on the Twitter, uh, you know, things are changing literally every single day. Um, so who knows? As of right now, um, 
I'm I'm staying booked. I'm staying busy. I'm staying healthy. I'm staying motivated. Uh, and when that next thing comes, I guess I'll find out when it comes. But as of right now, tomorrow, uh, I'm hopping on a plane. Um, I'm uh, I'm wrestling in front of an audience who you know pay tickets to to come see me and to come see my meet uh, meet me at my meet and greets and buy my t-shirts and talk about my music and talk about life and just like I said, just being present in the moment. I think I think uh, you can get pretty stressed out and overwhelmed looking at all of what's going on in the wrestling world right now and trying to plan and trying to and make sure that you know I'm doing the right thing to land here or there or there. But I think the most important thing for me is to just stay in the moment, just stay present in the moment. Don't stress myself out too much and uh, and remain healthy. So yeah. Good to stay centered because, uh, yeah, I, I consider life like a river. Just jump on in and see what, <laughs> let it take you down. And hopefully you don't have any rocks on the way down to the bottom of the river. But I got to say, man, it has been a pleasure talking to you today about so many different things. And especially how we took a deep dive into Bobby Lashley's butt. I did not expect to go 20 minutes on butts, but hey, That's we did. Lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We did it, folks. Well, so thank you so much for being here on Tango on Wrestling News Co. I'm Steve Ball. He's Leo Rush. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.